Hey, welcome to our channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how we renovated the main living area in our 2021 Grand Design Momentum 397 toy hauler, including the kitchen, living room, and dining area. If you wanna check out our other videos on how we renovated our kids' room and the garage, I'll put a link in the description and also at the end of the video. When we purchased our RV, it came in the standard dark brown and gray color scheme that so many RVs have. It looked fine, and many people liked the browns and grays, but we wanted something a little lighter and brighter, especially since we were going to be living in it full time. The very first thing we did is remove the bulky valances and boxes around the windows. Okay, so we're going to take these big valances off, and I'm going to show you where the screws are for these. So right under here, there's a screw right there on either side here and there that we will be removing. And then on the top, there is, can, there's a screw right there, let's see, right there that we're going to be unscrewing and then one also over here and then they should come right off. So there's only one L bracket on this one. Go ahead and walk it right out. Or show us the opposite side. Okay, so on the other side is the valance or the shade that comes down. And we'll just, there's a little latch on both sides that you push in. And then these just come right off. And then we're gonna save these brackets for when we reattach the shades without the valances. Steve removed the heavy wooden moldings from the ceiling, which in and of itself brightened up the space a ton. Then we got to work removing light fixtures, vent covers, and all the cabinet doors. After cleaning and sanding our walls and trim, I started taping up all the edges with painter's tape and Steve got started on priming with a shellac based primer. We let Grayson film this part so I apologize if it's a bit shaky. The TV is gone. Gone? Say cheese, ma'am. Is 
Is that glue? We had to use a shellac-based primer because there's no way a water-based primer would stick to the plasticky wood veneer that's used on the cabinets and trim. Well, let me just stick. Is it working? Depends on how you define working. During this time, California was getting an unusually high amount of rain and it was really cold outside. So we were using a propane heater, which causes a pretty humid environment, which we didn't know at the time. So when we started painting the walls, the metal frame of the RV was much colder than the interior walls were, which caused the paint in those areas to basically drip off. Kind of like when you have a cold drink in a warm environment, it sweats. So the same thing was happening to our walls. We ended up having to turn off the heater and dry the walls as best as we could and then we just ran a fan to try to cool it down and get the exterior temperature and the interior temperature to match. And then we went back and painted in the freezing cold. I don't recommend renovating an RV when it's winter time. We cleaned each panel with TSP. then sanded them down so the paint would stick. Remember, these are not real wood cabinets. They're just particle board covered in a thin veneer. They don't make them like they used to. We were originally going to paint the cabinets using an airbrush gun we got on Amazon. We figured that would be the easiest option. But when we tried the first cabinet, it looked horrible. It was all like speckled and blotchy. It was awful. So then we ended up having to paint them the old fashioned way with a paintbrush and roller. We applied the shellac primer first and came up with an easy way to let them dry using some eye hooks and clothes hangers. and the drawers we just stood up right to dry. One of the most common questions we get asked is what color we use for our cabinets and walls. So I'll put that in the description, but we used all Benjamin Moore paint, Chantilly lace for the walls, the upper cabinets were cloud cover, and the lower cabinets and pantry door were a color called CW640. It didn't have a regular name for some reason. I wanted to mention that some of this footage is filmed in a vertical orientation because we were focused on creating reels for Instagram and Facebook and weren't really focused on long form videos for YouTube. So I apologize if it's a little bit hard to see. For our cabinet hardware, we chose these pretty brushed bronze handles from Amazon.
Next, I wanted to add some peel and stick wallpaper to the stair faces to soften them up a bit. First, I had to measure each riser and trim the wallpaper down to size. It was pretty tricky to apply because of the curved surface and the stair lip hanging down over the top. I trimmed the excess and did the same thing to the two other steps. Super happy with the way it turned out. Next, it was time to install the new peel and stick tile backsplash. We purchased this from Amazon and it came in box sets of 10. For the edge pieces, I had to trim off the little tabs that lock it into place with the next tile. This tile was extremely sticky. I had to be very precise when lining it up and positive that it was in the right position before pressing it down or it would be almost impossible to remove. Since my backsplash area was a few inches taller than the tiles, I had to trim some of them to fit above the first row. Our pantry originally had a shelf with a lip on the very bottom, which I wanted to remove so I would have enough room to store my Instant Pot and air fryer down there. When we removed the shelf, we saw that it was covering part of the drain hole for the garage bathroom shower, which we had also removed. I'll post a link to that video in the description. Steve patched the hole with some plywood. And I covered it with a thin mat. a lot of questions about the bins that we use in our pantry of our um, 397 Momentum. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and show you which ones those are and we actually decided to switch them to a different kind that fit even better. So um, let me go ahead and show you which ones they are. All right so these were the bins that we originally had in there. Um, they're from Ikea and as you can see they fit but there's still a pretty big gap right here. And when you push them all the way, there's a pretty big gap over there. Um, so we went to Ikea yesterday and found these bins. See how the first ones on the bottom have that little dip and they're slightly smaller. These fit like a glove. There's very little wiggle room um, and they're longer as well. So there's not as much of a gap over there. We can even just like spread them out a little bit or we can, you know, put something narrow there. Um, I'm probably going to end up putting that rubber mat under here so that they don't slide around, but these fit a lot better as you can see. 
Um, so those are the bins we use. Oh, and another thing, they come with this lid. We probably won't be using them with the lid while they're in the pantry, but um, see? And then they're stackable too. So theoretically, you could stack them just like that. Since I wanted more storage in the pantry, I added some wire shelves to the inside of the door. Next, it was time to give the fireplace a makeover. It came with this sort of 3D plastic molding that we didn't care for. So once we removed that, Steve had to patch a large hole that it was covering to create a smooth surface for our peel and stick tile. I installed the same peel and stick tile we used for the backsplash to tie it all together. Since we were bringing our cat with us in our RV, we needed a place to store his litter box. Really the only solution that made sense was to build a custom bench for the dining area that would hide his litter box inside. Since there was an outlet in the corner where the bench would sit, Steve cut a hole in the wood so the bench could sit flush against the wall. I cut a layer of our old mattresses to the size of the bench and sewed a cover for it. I also made matching cushions for our two chairs. Steve cut down some butcher block countertop that we got at Home Depot to use as the new tabletop. We stained it and add several coats of polyurethane. We stained it with Minwax American, early American stain. And then so you just do that. And then for travel days, this folds down because um, the slide comes in and if we left it up it would hit the island but and then whenever we're parked we just leave it open and these are some heavy duty brackets also off amazon also from amazon we <laughs> order a lot from amazon we can link a bunch of these things in the description steve also made a cover for our stove top out of some extra pieces of butcher block which gives us more counter space when we removed the big wooden pieces from the ceiling of our slide, it also removed the lights in that area, so Steve had to create new holes for the lights to sit in.
Okay, so Joe wanted new door surrounds on the front door, the garage door, um, and the exterior garage door. Um, originally, there was kind of like a black padded curved surround here, um, and then it had a, a very thin brown um, molding on the side. Uh, so what we decided to do was uh, we made a template, cut this to size, and uh, that is what this is. And then we stained it the color of our choice, which is... Um, early American. Early American is what we stained uh, everything in the, the rig with. And um, these will be installed on his door. So I will get to it. We plan to... Uh, we plan to use construction adhesive, um, any sort of Loctite. Um, we just use the basic construction adhesive from Home Depot. It tends to be the cheapest. Um, and this I think is like $2.75 a tube. Um, and then what we did is the, the frame of the actual door sits in uh, inside a little bit more than the actual wall board. And so what we did is the same, um, this is five millimeter plywood. We use this for the shiplap in the garage. Uh, we ripped this down to even it out so the boards would sit flush with the frame. Um, it'd give it something easier to glue to and something easier to brad nail it to. So uh, we don't plan to use screws. We just plan to use uh, construction adhesive and brad nails, uh, inch and a quarter brad nails to attach this. Um, so I'll get to it once we're done. Um, we'll show you we're doing three sets. Um, two of them have the curved tops. One is going to be just, a, I think it's a one by 10 straight across. Um, and we'll, we'll show you what the then goal looks like and end product looks like. Almost had an oh crap moment there. No, then I remember that it, it <laughs> likes to sit on the uh, Oh, it likes to sit on the uh, little, little railing. <laughs> but yeah, at first I was like, mm, uh, so this tucks in behind. Oh, nice. I didn't realize you cut that out. Yeah, but it scrapes it while I do it. So it's, you know, tight in there. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think that's as tight as I can get it. The door to the garage area, which was now going to be our bedroom, had clear glass. So to give us some privacy, I added peel and stick wallpaper from Target. Next, we added some curtains to soften things up and give it a homey feel. We used a long tension rod we ordered from Amazon. Then it was finally time to add some decorative details and our renovation was complete.
I hope you enjoyed following along with our RV renovation. If you have any questions about our process or products we use, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if you want to see more of our renovation, check out these videos where you'll see how we converted the master bedroom into our kids' room and the garage into our master bedroom and office. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.